Hi, it's me. I'm in my poly tunnel. I thought I'd do a winter update because uh, it's winter and this is an update. Anyway, here we go. Uh, this is my... Oh, no, it's not. There we go. This is my indoor pond, indoor fish pond. And I've just fed the fish and they've not come to the surface as yet. And I should imagine it's because it's blooming freezing. So they're all down the bottom staying to toasty and warm. Um, the other pond is here. And again, there's some fish food on the top. I've tried feeding them but they're not really hungry because I expect they're, again, staying warm down the bottom in the depths of the pond. I've seen them. Um, I've seen those little baby gold. There's, there's a couple over there. Baby gold, white cloud minnow. And I've seen the rest of the school uh, shoal, giant shoal of fish in there. They're all doing well. I've got some plants on the side that are growing. Um, some are dying over and some are growing. My Venus fly traps and that are going a bit winterized and pitcher plants and everything, but they're still growing. My avocado tree dropped a lot of its leaves, but it's got new leaves on it. But it's looking chilly. It's just gone through a very cold, freezing night. I should imagine it was minus in here because there was ice on one of the ponds. Uh, the lime tree, the lemon tree and the calamine are all growing well. Sweet peas are just going over a bit because it's so cold. This is one of the indoor ponds and it's for the um, aquaponics system, which isn't running at the minute. My chili peppers are under here, and they've got some peppers on, which I'm gonna to have to pick now. Um, but a lot of the peppers have gone over, a lot of the plants have gone over, so I'm gonna try and prune them back and leave them in, and we'll perhaps put a mulch around the base of them to see if we can protect them. I've gotta rip out all of the tomato plants, because they've all died. Whole bed. There was a whole bed of tomatoes here, and they're dead as well. There's also these ones, and there's uh, a row of weird shaped leaf tomatoes, and they still seem to be going. And that's those ones there. Very odd indeed. Got some tomatoes on the edge. All the rest of them have gone. I'm going to pick the tomatoes and eat the last few. The frost killed the last of the sweet potato, so I'm going to have to pull it up and have to see how much I've got in there. There's one really big one there, and it's the one that I planted, the original one. It's got some got googly eyes all this too look so there's one there and it's actually a potato which is a sweet potato and it's this one here and I grew it in a glass and look at it it's got, <laughs> it's got very long thin roots on it but it's just a mad shape and it's still there and it's still got one googly eye so I'm going to take them home and eat them perhaps they've only been growing in a bathtub of uh, clay balls for the last year. There's another one, look, there's one. These are the ones that I've got often, which is nice, isn't it, that you get something back. You're supposed to plant them as slips. I planted those two as whole potatoes, but I know that there's other ones in here, and I'll, I'm just going to dig out to see what there is. Oh, it's so cold. Oh, there we go, look, there's another one. They're very small, but at least I'm getting something back. I'm just, there we go. There's uh, quite a few, but they're very small. And the two big ones are still there that I actually put in originally. Um, and it's got lots of baby ones on it. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna grow your own sweet potatoes in an aquaponics bathtub, and you'd like to have a try at it, do. You might get little tiny ones like this, but I expect you'll get some bigger ones as well. Um, I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to do it properly with the slips, which is the um, the rooted uh, shoots like this. So next year, in fact, I'm going to plant that one in there, and it'll kind of hold it and keep it nice for another uh, little while. I'll put that one in as well, because they're um, it's like protecting them from the frost a bit. And I'll take the little ones home. I did actually get a good couple of handfuls of little ones before. Um, so there's still more in the bathtub, but that's what I got. These are shop-bought, by the way. So I did a, a, a little series on shop-bought fruit and veg. And I did shop-bought um, sweet potatoes, which are these, and shop-bought uh, pineapple, which is in the, um, it's not a raised bed anymore, but it's in the pond bed down by the little fish pond down the bottom there. Now this is my worm bin, and it's a bathtub worm bin. Underneath it's got a bucket there that collects the worm juice. Um, as worms break things down, they produce moisture, which 
just drips out the bottom and you call it worm tea and you can mix it with other vegetables and vegetable scraps and sorry other compost and things like that and you can use it as a fertilizer there's a bit of crab claw in there look i don't know if crab it won't break that down but um this is my worm bin i'm just showing you but i put my veggie scraps nut shells all sorts of things in it and the worms come along and they munch it all up and they produce worm tea which you can use as a fertilizer as i say and you can also use the compost which is the worm castings they call it black gold and it's one of the best things you can use in your garden um, to mix with your compost to grow amazing vegetables and this is my worm bin bathtub it's got a bit of this um, insulation foam over the top but the animals do get in and have a rummage about in it as well anyway i'll just sort of bring you along for a quick uh, update of my poly tunnel still got some of the shading stuff up about this end um, the majority of it's down and i've got to do a proper clear out but i just wanted to show you that i am still doing stuff hope everyone's well cheers